Right. Hello, everybody. I am uh, Carlos. I work for the Android kernel team at Google. Uh, thank you for joining. Um, I'm going to talk about binder driver and um, a very specific issue, a performance issue uh, that we had. And um, how did we solve it? Uh, before before we get into this uh, performance issue, though, uh, just a bit of background. So this is the model, the general model of how Binder is used in Android. You just have this bunch of clients uh, that are trying to talk in parallel to the server. It's a it's a client server model. And what happens on the service side is that uh, there's a threat pool. And you have all these threads uh, that are trying to uh, service all these individual transactions in parallel. Um, and um, you know the unique thing about Binder here is that uh, the service is going to memory map a region of memory, and um, all the different clients are going to try to compete uh, right here for a region, for a piece, for a range of, of that memory map. Uh, and you know that's, uh, that's where the performance impact um, that we're going to discuss uh, happens. Uh, even, though, you know, even though you have all these threads, uh, you still need to compete for a section of memory right there. Um, by the way, you compete uh, because Binder performs a copy from uh, user memory A Client one, for instance, directly uh, to the service uh, memory map area. There's no in buffer. Uh, there's no in kernel buffering. So, if we have a close up at this um, memory region, the section, uh, it is it is a single virtual memory area. And the way that binder works is that it partitions. Uh, it's not particularly page aligned. Uh, but it, but what it does is that it has this concept of binder buffers, and each binder buffer is like uh, metadata of the range of the VMA being assigned to that particular transaction. Uh, each message or each transaction gets an individual binder buffer, and um, you know, but, but this is all virtual addresses, right? We still need to make sure before we start copying, we need to make sure that. Uh, physical pages are associated with a particular address. So, you know, in the case where we don't have a page associated, uh, then what Binder does is that it manually allocates and inserts that page uh, for that particular address. And, and um, on the release path, right, once the uh, once the server consumes the message and it says, okay, I no longer need it, I've, I've read uh, whatever I needed to read, so let's just release the binder buffer. Uh, we, we go ahead and sort of uh, clear that range, but uh, what's important here is that we don't actually free the page. Um, we just add it to this uh, least recently used list. Uh, that it's global within binder. And um, when there's memory pressure and the shrinker is trying to reclaim a particular page, uh, then we, you know, that's when we actually go ahead and free the page, give it to somebody else, and 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 you know, rinse and repeat. Okay, so there lies the problem, right? Uh, all these requests need to be serialized, and uh, we do so via this mutex, this uh, per process, per server mutex, uh, and, and, uh, which you know just was receiving a ton of contention, uh, particularly during the uh, graphics uh, core pipeline. Um, and so, you know, what what was the issue? What was happening? And why was that uh, particular scenario a problem? So. A low priority task would take this mutex, and um, it was typically say a background task running on this like super saturated uh, little CPUs, and uh, it would then go to sleep with the mutex held. And 
all these uh, all these high priority tasks that are trying to use uh, that server uh, would just get blocked. And because he was, you know, the uh, he was not spinning on the owner, they would also go to sleep, and then you have a big problematic scenario. So, what made the situation particularly an issue or particularly a bad issue was that uh, we nest the memory map block under this mutex. Now, why is that? Um, you know, the whole pipeline of assigning a particular mutex may or may not require allocating and inserting a new page. And when you do that, you know, to be able to insert the page, you need to acquire this memory map. It's a semaphore. And uh, if some, somebody else was holding that map block um, on some unrelated VMA, uh, then it would go to sleep and, and, and in, increase uh, the chances of creating contention. This was particularly an issue uh, when we were trying to reclaim pages at the same time. So you had this loop of uh, you're trying to allocate a page, uh, you don't have memory for it, and then you acquire the log, try to reclaim a page, you get it from a different binder process, and you return, and it was just a nightmare uh, with these logs. Oh, sorry. So we. Sorry, which lock is are you trying to acquire in that in that scenario? The the memory map log on the server. And so the the top log is is alloc mutex, which controls the like this whole procedure, and under it. If you don't find the page, it, that's when you do acquire the uh, memory map semaphore. Only then. Okay. That, that, that's changed. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, what is the solution, right? What, uh, what is changing now? First of all, uh, we remove all the operations that might sleep. Uh, some of them were pretty trivial. Uh, like pre-allocating stuff, um, you can do that outside of the mutex, that's easy. Uh, but then uh, the major change, I guess, is to split uh, the process of setting up the, the, the range of the binder buffer separated from the actual page insertion. Uh, and the idea there is that if you can do the two things uh, separately with like different logs, then um, then they're now no longer nested, number one. And two, if, if a particular request doesn't actually need to insert new pages because it's all, it already has pre-allocated all of its pages, then it can just go through. It doesn't matter if some other request needs to allocate a page, you know, it's, uh, they're not serialized in that case, which, which, is, which is great. So at the end of the day, uh, it turns out that um, all the operations that would sleep or, or that would require having a, a sleeping log uh, under the alloc mutex, uh, they were gone, right? We were not longer doing the page insertion under the mutex, uh, mallocs and all of that, it's, we're gone. So we were able to turn the mutex into a spin log. Uh, that was, you know, significant performance. Uh, there's a V1 that I posted. Um, and so what are the results? It turns out that during the worst case scenario, we can get even like 200% improvements, which is great. It was amazing. Um, this, is, this is not a real case um, workload. It's, it's, it's you know, particularly a stress test meant, meant to like showcase uh, this particular new way of processing uh, things. And, and this is well time, by the way. I, um, this is like transaction well time seen by the client. And uh, this particular test just has a bunch of different clients, different priorities, um, sending particularly transactions of uh, different sizes as to wanted to create fragmentation um, instead of like reusing old ranges. And, um, but anyway, you know, the V1, it's there. Uh, there's still some things to, I think, um, wrap up. 
Uh, but overall, uh, this would this was, this would create you know significant improvements under these uh, particular scenarios. I think that's it. Questions? Do you have any sense of how much uh, contention there is under MMAP block after the changes? Yeah, so this used to be pretty bad um, before like the per VMA um, locking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that that was particularly yeah. worse. Okay. Uh, and also there's, there's another way to make changes. Um, right now in the patch set that I have, I'm actually synchronizing because two different clients can try to raise to allocate and insert the same page. I'm synchronizing them uh, with the right mode log, and that's not ideal. I think we want to have maybe like a per page mutex. Yeah. And, a, a, a per binder, per binder page mutex, not not a not a struct page mutex. And then underneath it, um, use <laughs> yeah, not not the you know framework, the MM framework page, but the a. a uh, binder page mutex that uh, would resolve this serialization and use a memory map read lock instead, uh, because you know you can you can actually insert pages with the re or you should be able to insert pages uh, with only the read lock. So what I'm saying is that binders should only use the memory map lock as read mode at the end of the day. And, and if it okay. needs to be synchronized during those uh, particular operations, then it needs to be done via some other way. Perhaps it's not actually a mutex, but a uh, fault in, you know, trying to fault it in uh, with a retry uh, mechanism. Uh, what, is it, what is this flag? VM fault retry, something like that? May, may fault retry, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, so one of the things that, I, I don't know, uh, on the service side, well, you, you mentioned that the uh, binder buffers aren't page aligned. Uh, but if they were, then you could have multiple VMAs, and then you'd only have contention within a thread, yeah. and you'd never see that. Yeah, so most of the, th this is because of the size of each transaction. Uh, most of the sizes, really most small. of the messages in binder are way less uh, okay. than the page size. It's under 1K, so, so yeah. Did you consider any um, lockless synchronization uh, methods? Yeah, uh, like I like I said, uh, there's some work, there's some room for improvement there for sure. Um, there are some data structures, um, like instead of using a red black tree, uh, we could move over to uh, the maple tree, uh, which you can do some you know some operations under the RCU. Uh, it's, you know, and I think it provides also like cache friendly efficiency, uh, which is great. Uh, there is still some improvements to do. Also, these um, this API of faulting in pages could be done uh, without, uh, you know, so that multiple clients can try to raise, trying to fault in a specific uh, page can be done without. Uh, uh, synchronization, sort of like a retry. All of this supported by the um, MM infrastructure. So Binder doesn't actually need to do this like retry mechanism. So, so yeah, there is some room uh, to do some lockless implementations uh, in there for sure. Last minute uh, questions? <laughs> <laughs> uh, was this issue replicated in the Rust implementation? And if so, was it mitigated in the same way? We have not tried to replicate uh, this, but we could and measure it, what mm. happens. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm the author of the Rust implementation. Sorry? I'm the author of the Rust yeah, implementation. No, yeah. Yeah. I, the question was to both of you, actually. So, yeah. Um, uh, so I haven't tried that benchmark that Carlos shared, but... Uh, so the implementation that's in the RFC is much more similar to what's in the patch set that Carlos sent recently than what's actually upstream today. Do you use mutexes in that? Yeah. yeah. We use a spin lock. Thank you.